the winning a lot. Prayer must be accompanied with believing. When we go to heaven, we're going to go through the gates. Is that true? How would you like for your name to be in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? We have the word that gives us life. I was born in Dalhart, Texas. It's a little town near Amarillo. I grew up there till I was six and then went to San Angelo. And then when the Second World War came, my father moved back to Pennsylvania. We all moved back there and he helped build the ships. So I would say I had a normal childhood. I had good parents who loved me. I studied foreign languages. I got started in high school with Latin and French and had such a desire to really uh, be a foreign ambassador. So I was a collective foreign language major. When I met Wally, he, he really had an experience with Jesus. He had been saved as a teenager, but gotten into entertainment and pretty wild living and then came back to the Lord and went to a spirit-filled church and got spirit-filled. And there he met my mother. And my mother had some friends that wanted me to get spirit-filled because I was about as committed as a fly. And so they started praying and they thought maybe Wally could have an influence on me. So my mother's out of town with my grandmother and they invited me over for dessert and I met Wally. Well, he's so crazy radical about Jesus, you know, real turned on. And I thought, you're too religious, goodness sake, but you're so good looking. And, and I felt attracted to him and that night he invited me to church. So I went to my mother's church, which is a Pentecostal church. They prayed in tongues, they cried, <laughs> they praise the Lord, all these things. And I went to be with him. And so we began dating. And so after seven months, he gave me a ring. I'm just so happy about it. And my mother said this to me, which is really bad. She said, I don't know if I think you should marry Wallace Hickey. He's very spiritual and you're not. I'm afraid you'll ruin him. <laughs> but he loved to come to our house for dinner. And so one night we had invited him and he came later. He said, no, I'll be there later. I said, why didn't you come for dinner? He loved my mother's cooking. He said, well, I'm fasting. Oh, why are you fasting? I'm fasting for you for three days. I said, I'm a Christian. You don't need to fast for me. He said, but you're not a committed one. And I serve the devil with all my heart. And now I'm gonna serve God with all my heart and I'm not going to marry a half-hearted woman. I said, do you want your ring back? He's and I'm hoping he would say no. He said, I don't know. I'm fasting and praying. So for three days, three nights, I'm teaching school here in Denver at Grant Junior High. I can't sleep. And you can't sleep when you teach junior high. Oh, that's bad. And the third night, the Lord said to me, I have dealt with you and dealt with you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit for four years, and you've said no. He said, and I'm not going to deal with you anymore. He said, if you turn down the commitment of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he said, I'll show you what you're going to do. You'll never marry Wallace Hickey. You'll move to California. You'll get your master's. You'll have a good life. You'll marry a Christian. You'll die and go to heaven. But he said, I have something so wonderful for you. You cannot imagine. And so that night I committed everything I knew to God and said, I want to be spirit filled. And within 24 hours, I was spirit filled. The year we married would have been 1954. And you have to remember, I had a very long marriage, like 57 years. Michael was three and a half years old and when we saw him he was with a Southern Baptist pastor who had kind of taken him in until they could find a home for him and we had not had Sarah yet 
And we were very touched by him and took him into our home, adopted him. Sarah is a miracle baby, and it's very interesting how God put that together because they told me when I was 26, I, we wanted to have a child, and I couldn't get pregnant. And they said, well, you never can. You have a condition that you will never have a baby. But Wally especially did not believe that. And we went to a big healing meeting in Dallas, Texas, Christ for the Nations, and William Branham spoke, very well-known evangelist at that time, and prophesied that we would have a baby. But you know, you think, oh yeah, nine months away, it was 10 years later. And then when I thought I was pregnant, I went to a doctor, he said, you're not pregnant, it's impossible. You're going through the change. Well, I went home and had some more changes, went to a different doctor, and he said, you are five and a half months pregnant. And of course you see Sarah. We started in the ministry in 1957, three years after we were married, and we did a year of evangelism. You know, who knew us? And Wally would fast and pray in the daytime, and then he'd preach at night. I would go door to door and take people with me, and so we always had people get born again because we went and got them. And after a year of that, uh, we were invited to be assistant pastors in what was considered a big church at that time of 500 people there. We accepted it and Wally preached and you know we did all those things but I taught a Sunday school class of young married and I fell in love with teaching the Bible. After almost two years Wally felt led to leave so we came back to Denver thinking we would go into evangelism but our neighbor that we had led to Christ, they had started a little church and they said, would you help us until we find a pastor? And that's the way our church started. And uh, we just had a little uh, church in a store building. If you had seen it, you would have thought, I don't want to go there. But we had a passion to reach the lost. And that began to grow. And I began to do home Bible studies and uh, those home Bible studies led to a radio ministry. Here we are in Denver, our home city. Uh, our home church is here. And, you know, people said, well, who are Wally and Marilyn to teach us anything? You know, they're just babies in the ministry. They don't know enough. So that was difficult to overcome, that people didn't want to come because they thought we were so immature. So we went after the lost. And that's how our church began. So that, that was difficult. And then once our church began to grow and I was having home Bible studies, I felt that God wanted me to go on the radio. And women, oh my goodness, in those years, women were not accepted. And God told me, this will never be your problem. It will be my problem. Your problem will be your faith. Through her 60 years of ministry, Marilyn has created a lasting legacy of faith and continues to fulfill her ongoing mission of covering the earth with the word. Marilyn is considered to be a trailblazer of worldwide missions. Learn how God has helped her achieve the unimaginable. For your gift of $45 or more, we want to send you Legacy of Faith. In this candid, upfront reflection on her life, you will find powerful truths from the Word and see how the hand of God has guided her every step. We will also send you her Aging Gracefully book, featuring her top 10 health secrets, along with her Pathway to Miracles 3 CD teaching set, which includes four powerful messages that will help you live a miraculous life full of God's favor. For your gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you these three products along with our Names of God Afghan and the Solar Powered Spinning Globe. These two lovely gifts will remind you how you are helping Marilyn cover the earth with the Word. Call or click for these valuable resources. Welcome to Today with Marilyn. Today with Marilyn Hickey is a teaching program seen around the world on every continent. And every one of you watching me who is a Christian is anointed because even the word Christian 
means anointed. When I wanted to go on television, remember hardly anybody's on television to start with. Or Roberts was on, a pastor here in Denver was on. So I met with the board of Channel 9, which had nine men on the board. And I said, I would like to do a 30-minute program just teaching the Bible on Sunday mornings. They said, oh, you're not television material. You would never make it. But in my heart, I knew I was supposed to do this. And one man on the board said, well, let's try her. I think she'll pay her bill. <laughs> and that's how I got on television. I was on, on Sunday mornings for eight years. It did very, very well. And I thought, you know, that's 44 years ago. None of those men are on television, and <laughs> I still am. 18 years ago, Sarah and her husband, Reese, her wonderful husband, came to work with us. And at that time, I could see Sarah has quite an anointing for teaching and wants to reach the world. So she came on the program, and what a blessing she is. She goes all around the world. My favorite thing of co-hosting the program with Sarah, my daughter, is that this is fruit that remains and keeps bearing fruit. When Sarah was growing up, we never in any way indicated she would be used in the ministry. When she was about seven or eight, she wanted to be an astronaut. We said, wonderful, we'll help you. Then when she was 11 and 12, she wanted to be an architect. We said, wonderful, we'll help you. And then when she hit about 17, she went to ORU and took German and decided she wanted to be a teacher. We said, wonderful. And then she had a dramatic experience with the power of the Holy Spirit, like two days before she was married. And God called her. We never called her. We were as shocked as anybody. My husband and I would say, shocked? You know, we thought she was going to be an architect or a school teacher. And here she feels called into the ministry. So that is extremely satisfying to see your own child hungry for God. I love to talk about my grandchildren. Sarah has three. Isabel is 15. David is 14. Benji is 12. Oh, wonderful. Three teenagers. But they are so exciting to me. Now, this is what I do with my grandchildren. I have dates with them. So I just take one at a time and we go out for dinner. They spend the night, and then they like to cook breakfast for me, and they bring DVDs and we watch those. And so we just have fun together. And I just let them talk, what do they wanna do? What do they wanna say? And you know, I like to be there for them. When I was 42, I took some time aside and just fasted and prayed because I was getting very busy, and I thought, you know, I can do a lot of good things for God and miss His best. So I just took some time, and the Lord said to me, I've called you to cover the earth with the Word, Isaiah 11:9. Now, thanks God, but how do you do that? And so really, I would say through the years, that has been a process in my life. And my passion is to get people in the book and for the Bible not only to be read, but to read them. So what do you do? There are people who don't even have a Bible. And I remember in Egypt, uh, we did some live satellite things and bought Bibles in Arabic to be distributed in Egypt. That was way back in the early part of my ministry. But then I just became infected with China because China, in these years under Mao Zedong, communism, no Bibles. And there was an underground revival going on in China where literally millions of people were being born again, but no Bible. Maybe they would hand write a, a whole chapter of the Bible or a whole book of the Bible. And we began to smuggle in Bibles. I have been in China 34 times but not all those times did I smuggle in Bibles. You don't have to now. They can buy them. But that was an awesome time in my life to go to the underground church 
and take in literally thousands and thousands of Bibles that Sarah got involved in too. And then when Russia opened up, you know, we ran in as soon as the Iron Curtain dropped, we ran in and we took Bibles because this is what's going to change people's lives. They get born again, but it, it, you need the Bible to feed you. And I was not raised in a church that taught the Bible. So when I got hold of the Bible at 11 and began reading it, I wasn't born again, I thought this is just too good to be true. Then I got born again at 16. And the Bible, I would say, is the passion of my life. I look forward every morning to when I read the Bible. Uh, I look forward to memorizing the Bible. You know, I've memorized like 23 books of the Bible, not counting over 100 Psalms, but I don't do that to quote it to you. I do that because it's like the Bible reads me and it brings such a personal relationship I have been in 134 countries. Now that doesn't mean I've ministered in every one, but many of these countries, God has opened doors to me. For example, in Tibet, this is recent. We took a team of people, over 100, I think 104 people into Tibet. Now China governs Tibet. You cannot pass out a track. Don't talk to anybody about Jesus. And the people, the Tibetan people, are Buddhist, so, you know, we're threatened. So we said, okay, we can do prayer walking. So everywhere we walked, we prayed that Jesus would be revealed to Tibet. And I had the most wonderful guide. And so one day, he said to me, do you know anything about Jesus? <laughs> do I know anything about you? I said, well, yes. He said, I'd like to know about Jesus. I said, well, I have four New Testaments, I th no, I think they were whole Bibles, in the Tibetan language. Oh, he said, I want the first one. So he went to the Lama, the head Lama, and told him I had these three Bibles in the Tibetan language. So the head Lama called us in, we gave him the three Bibles, and he started a Bible study with all the monks in Tibet. Through her 60 years of ministry, Marilyn has created a lasting legacy of faith and continues to fulfill her ongoing mission of covering the earth with the word. Marilyn is considered to be a trailblazer of worldwide missions. Learn how God has helped her achieve the unimaginable. For your gift of $45 or more, we want to send you Legacy of Faith. In this candid, upfront reflection on her life, you will find powerful truths from the Word and see how the hand of God has guided her every step. We will also send you her Aging Gracefully book, featuring her top 10 health secrets, along with her Pathway to Miracles 3 CD teaching set, which includes four powerful messages that will help you live a miraculous life full of God's favor. For your gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you these three products along with our Names of God Afghan and the Solar Powered Spinning Globe. These two lovely gifts will remind you how you are helping Marilyn cover the earth with the word. Call or click for these valuable resources. In the Middle East, I have unusual favor. And don't ask me why, because the Islamic countries are where I have my biggest meetings. You say, well, they hate women. And not only are you a woman, you're an old woman but they loved me. So in 1994, I went into Pakistan. And you know, everybody said, they'll kill you when you stand up and they see a woman, they'll walk out, but it didn't happen that way. I was there four nights and the last night we had over 20,000 people. I have been to Pakistan 10, 11 times. I'm preparing to go again. And my biggest meetings are in Pakistan. Our last meeting, and that would have been when I was 80, we had over 230,000 people. Let's remember, 80% of these people are Muslim. What turns them on? Healing and miracles. The Muslim people believe Jesus heals. They believe he's a prophet, not the Son of God, as we believe that he died for our sins. So they come to be healed. So in these Muslim countries like Sudan, 
uh, various countries like Uganda, Tanzania. I'm telling you, Muslims come and get healed. I was afraid for my life one time in Pakistan because I think this was my third or fourth trip there and over 30 men took an oath to kill me and to blow up the stadium. And so they said, you can't use the stadium. The government just closed it down. And, you know, we had a guard at my door 24 hours a day in the hotel uh, to watch everything. And so I began to be afraid. And I thought, now, God, did you call me to be a martyr? <laughs> what am I here for? And in that timing, uh, we got to go. There was one Catholic church there, and they had a big football field. And they said we could come and use that. And without advertising, and we had two nights, we had over 30,000 people. Many people born again, many people healed, and just awesome results. And you notice they didn't kill me. The Lord said to me, it's not your name that heals the sick. It's my name. You just present my name. I'll do the healing. And these miracles go through a community, go through a city, go through a country. I have faith for healing. There are gifts of healing. And I see some of that in my life now. But I think from the very beginning, I just saw healing is the bread of the children. I believe also that God has opened doors for me to go to leaders of nations. And so I like to get in there and pray with them for healing. And often that opens their hearts for the gospel of Jesus Christ as their savior. One of the most special things in my life is our group tours. We began to advertise a trip overseas to China. And we went to Singapore and to China and we smuggled in Bibles. And we had like 150 people who went with us. Now, if you have 150 people who are each taking 500 Bibles in, I mean, honey, that's not shabby. And that turned me on because some of those people who went with me from television, I didn't know them at all, were called into full-time ministry. And that broke something in my heart to see you know, my two hands could be laid, but if you get 150 people with two hands, you multiply the results. So ever since then, I've been taking people and I advertise on television, advertise every way I can into various countries. I believe I've had 56, maybe 57 of those trips, but the results of those trips in people's lives, they are never the same. I want to talk to you about retirement because a lot of people ask me this question, when are you going to retire? And this is what I say to them and I want to encourage you with this. I say, I am retired. You travel all the time, you're doing more in your 80s than you did in your 40s. I say, that's right. Retiring is doing what you like. So I have big plans for the future. For one thing, I want to go into Iran. I want to have a healing meeting. But also, I am mentoring. I mentor people who want to pastor. I mentor people who want to do media, television, radio, books, all those kind of things, Facebook now. And then, I love to mentor people about doing healing meetings internationally. I believe these ages can be the best and God can give you the most favor that you've ever had. I'm not gonna be buried with my mantle. I'm gonna throw it on everyone who wants it. Through her 60 years of ministry, Marilyn has created a lasting legacy of faith and continues to fulfill her ongoing mission of covering the earth with the word. Marilyn is considered to be a trailblazer of worldwide missions. 
Learn how God has helped her achieve the unimaginable. For your gift of $45 or more, we want to send you Legacy of Faith. In this candid, upfront reflection on her life, you will find powerful truths from the Word and see how the hand of God has guided her every step. We will also send you her Aging Gracefully book, featuring her top 10 health secrets, along with her Pathway to Miracles 3 CD teaching set, which includes four powerful messages that will help you live a miraculous life full of God's favor. For your gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you these three products along with our Names of God Afghan and the Solar Powered Spinning Globe. These two lovely gifts will remind you how you are helping Marilyn cover the earth with the Word. Call or click for these valuable resources. you know about my mom, Marilyn Hickey. It's her passion, her desire, her enthusiasm, her commitment to really see her mantle continue, of course. And when you think about who Marilyn Hickey is and how God has used her throughout, throughout decades, really there's three anointings that are on this ministry. An anointing for the Bible, to be passionate, hungry for the Word of God, and let the Word of God become alive in our hearts also an anointing for healing and miracles. Not just out there in Never Never Land and for everybody else, but for you and me, that we walk in healing and miracles and to cover the earth with the word, to reach nations for Jesus. And so really, let's, let's say yes to the Holy Spirit, working these things in our hearts as well. And I'd encourage you as well, we have this amazing resource called Legacy of Faith Collection. It's an amazing book. Uh, and really, really phenomenal on who Marilyn Hickey is, what she's done, and some of the core essential teachings from her life that we can see and let roll into our lives. And I love this. It's, it's super easy to read. Of course, there's rich, rich truths from the Word of God that we can apply in our lives. I love that she makes the Bible so real, so tangible, so relevant to our daily living. So. I just encourage you, this would be a tremendous resource, tool for you um, to see this mantle continue and grow. Really, I know that's mom's heart, is to see this mantle continue and grow on us as well as through us. Thanks so much.